Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, Twitter, a variety of other platforms when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be sharing this week about all of my K-5 lessons for the week, and then I'm also going to do a focus, hopefully, on um, fifth grade lessons, assuming I get there and uh, am better with my pacing. The last couple weeks I've been taking um, a while to get through the lessons and I want to share um, all those lessons for you, kindergarten through fifth grade, and then uh, focus more on fifth grade with a little bit more in depth about um, how I do things and why. But that'll get to that in a second. So if you hear me talk about uh, resources, books, uh, puppets, anything in the video that you're like, that sounds cool, where can I find out more about that? Um, I have a page on my blog just dedicated to all the links in these videos. So you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, and you can hit the video tab. Um, and it, there should be a drop down for all the Musical Mondays videos and then find the one for this year. Or if you're watching on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, you can just click the link at the bottom of the caption and you should be able to go straight to um, that links page. Um, also, I'm trying a uh, new microphone and new video camera and stuff this year. So uh, especially Facebook, if you can't hear or see me, I guess you wouldn't be able to say anything. But if you could say something, um, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> Let me know like you can actually hear slash see me. That's cool. <laughs> but I guess if you can't, no one's going to say anything, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, one more thing. If you are on Facebook, um, there's a Facebook group that I started a couple years ago called Every Moment Matters uh, Music Education Community. If you want to keep the conversation going after this video, um, if you want to ask or clarify anything like that, um, you can join that Facebook group. Um, it's free. It's just for music teachers. and You can ask any question you want of me, of other people, um, and hopefully you'll get some great answers by joining that group. So Facebook, if you're interested, just search for the group Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, and you can join and we can chat and be hopefully great. Um, okay, a couple more things before I get started because I want to talk about all my lessons. I also want to share a few new books that are new to me um, in case you're interested and want to learn a few more books. I've got a couple of fun ones to share. Um, I am going to be doing a couple in-person workshops in the coming weeks. And if you are around um, any of these areas, I'd love for you to join us. Um, I'm going to be with the Greater Chicago ORF chapter on September 18th. Um, that is in, um, not Skokie, it's, it's in one of the northern suburbs, so I hope, you can always just click the links page on my blog, um, or the, the about me section actually on my blog is where all my workshops for the year are listed, you can find more information there, or just send me a message. Um, I'm also going to be with the St. Louis Orf chapter on September 25th, um, that's going to be in Ellisville, Missouri, so sort of on the western side of the city, so if you're in, uh, eastern Missouri you want to join us, we'd love to have you, or St. Louis area or Western Illinois, I don't know, or Arkansas, I don't know, you could drive. <laughs> um, and then we'll be with the Milwaukee Orf chapter on October 2nd, so if you're in the greater Milwaukee area, we'd love to see you. Okay, so I want to share a couple quick books before I jump into my lessons because it's always fun to talk about um, new resources that we have and how are you using them, and um, I just want to share, these are three that I have not used yet. Uh, they're new, but I wanted to share them, new to me, I wanted to share them with you so that you can like get a look at them and see and then like decide if you want to use them or not. Um, so they're sort of um, up and coming, what can we do with these books? But I'm going to tell you what they are, share just a little bit of them, and then tell you what I'm planning on doing with them. The first one is um, a book version of the movie School of Rock. And I love this because the, the pictures are super fun, um, the story is cute, kids might know it like I I mean I don't it's an older movie but what I like about this is that I spent lots of last year talking about musician biographies talking about famous musicians um, out in the hallway I'll post um, I have these bulletin boards that give profiles of famous musicians throughout um, every month of the year and I, I made that, that bulletin board so it was like every month of the year I would highlight people famous musicians composers uh, rock stars pop stars um, instrumentalists who are born in that month. So anyway, kids are seeing these profiles of these famous musicians, and so this is sort of a fun connection. So this is School of Rock. It's written um, based on the film by Mike White, illustrated by Kim Smith, and I'll just read you just a couple pages. It really closely follows what I remember of the movie. It's been a while <laughs> since I've seen it. Um, Dewey had only two dreams in his life, to be a rock star and to win Battle of the Bands. Instead, with just three weeks until the big competition, he was kicked out of his own band. Sorry, Dewey, but we all voted. You're fired. Fine, I'm going to go form my own band, and we're going to start a revolution. 
Even his best friend thought that it was time for Dewey to quit music. Maybe it's time to give up those dreams, Ned said. Whoa, Ned, not supportive. <laughs> Dewey didn't want to give up on his dreams, but maybe everyone was right. Maybe he didn't have what it took to be a rock star. So instead, he became a substitute teacher. You'll be teaching a fifth grade class, said Principal Mullins. You'll have to be strict and firm with the children. Principal Mullins introduced Dewey to the class. Students, miss, meet Mr. S. He's going to be your teacher until the end of the year, or end of the quarter. You'll have a lot of material to cover, so I'll leave you to it. So you can probably tell it already basically follows <clears throat> the plot line of School of Rock, the movie. Um, but what I love about it, a lot of diversity in the class. Um, he goes through, I mean, it does follow the story of um, School of Rock, like making a rock band out of this fifth grade class, right? Um, so these kids become musicians, says, what are the rest of us supposed to do? And he says, rock bands need so much more than just musicians. There's a job for everyone. So he puts, makes some people background singers, some people in um, charge of equipment, um, the, like lasers and smoke machines and amps. One person designs the costumes, there's security. So like you could tie this into like musical jobs and music related jobs, things that are like, mu I mean, music tangent, Joel. Um, he talks a little bit about music history. Um, and so then they go in, they do battle the bands. They don't win, um, but the kids end up loving music. Super cute little book. Again, based on the movie School of Rock. I, I don't know how many of my kids would have seen that. Probably not many. I don't know. Um, but it's a super fun book. And like I said, I'm going to try and connect it to jobs because our school jobs and careers and that. And then also try and connect it with like the musician profile bulletin boards that I put out in the hallway um, for kids to see so that they can see famous musicians who have lived or are living who were born in the month the bulletin board is up. So again, this is School of Rock. It's uh, based on the movie by Mike White, illustrated by Kim Smith. I put a link to that on the links page if you're interested. Another book I came across this summer that I know a lot of you have seen, but maybe you've not actually seen inside, is this book called When Step Met Skip. And this is by Vicki Webster, or Weber. Sorry, I don't know why I keep, I, every time I say her name, I try and add an S. Weber. Sorry, Vicki. <laughs> um, but it's a, a fun book, and let me just share um, a couple pages of it and then talk how I'm hoping to use it. Step loved to step up and down the staff. Sometimes he would go all the way up, then all the way down. Sometimes he stepped all the way down, then stepped back up to the top. And other times he stepped in zigzag patterns. One day he saw someone jumping from a space to a space. Hello there, skips the name, she said with a bow, with a bow. <laughs> Whoa. Um, she said with a bow before skipping up another space. She gestured to step to join her. I much prefer to step up and down with my songs. That's the way I play, said Step uneasily. He watched Skip skip up and down and all around and almost grew dizzy. How could she do that? Why don't you try something new, asked Skip with a smile. Step frowned in return. He took a single step up. It's much safer to step, he said. I like to keep my feet planted and I always know exactly where I'm going. Give Skipping a try, said Skip. She took a big leap up, up to two spaces above Step and grinned down at him. Hello down there, she yelled, waving. She held out a hand. Step skipped to the next space. Hey, that wasn't so bad, he thought happily. So it's it's cute. It goes through uh, stepwise and skipping movement. Um, and so... It, it's a it's a fun book that sort of gets kids looking and seeing even they show like two of them sort of moving sort of at the same time they're moving together so it's showing uh, movement on a staff like a literal actual staff and then it comes towards the end I love these visuals there it's really really pretty it's not just like a treble club staff on a page even though that is definitely the the view behind everything so how would you use this i think you could use it really early on in kinder or first just to show a staff um, and then you could you could connect that to movement like on a xylophone if you wanted to do stepwise movement or jumping movement you don't have to i mean it doesn't have to be like a we're talking about the treble clef in k or one like you could read this book in k and one and just talk about steps and skips right like on a xylophone like a practical actual right away connection later on if you're talking about 
um, iconic notation, again, maybe not with a treble clef, maybe you don't even mention that at all, maybe it's a simple two-line or three-line staff, you can again do steps and skips, and then when you're ready, you can make this uh, more aligned to the treble clef and actually talk about steps and skips in the treble clef. But again, I would probably early on, I would use it like like practically for kindergarten or first grade talking about like actual physical movement on a xylophone maybe doing something more simplified with a simple staff for younger grades and older grades getting more so you can really sort of like level this depending on what it is that you're doing um, and I think that you could use it you could use it once in one year and then bring it back in a following year to talk about the more difficult concepts so this is uh, when step met skip and this is by Vicki Weber it's a fun book. And again, I have a link to that on the links page if you're interested. And then the last book is one that I came across. It is not a music book, but it's a super fun book. And it's called um, The Magical Yet. And this is written by, um, uh, the words are by Angela D. Terlizzi and art by Lorena Alvarez. This is a Disney book. Well, Disney publishing house. Um, so let me read just a couple pages. There are days when your dreams haven't come true, or you're upset by the things you can't do. If you've lost or failed or cried just a bit, you're tired of waiting, ready to quit. Like that shiny new bike you couldn't ride, and it didn't matter how hard you tried. You couldn't pedal, and you couldn't steer, and you couldn't get that bike into gear. Then when you thought you were on the right track, you popped a wheelie and fell on your back. And now you won't ride. No way. Not never. No riding for you. You'll walk forever. Don't give up now. There's a major game changer. A most amazing thought rearranger. Someone to show you how good you can get. Now introducing the magical yet. With this yet's magic, you can begin to see that you're going beyond where you've been. There are so many things that you've learned to do when you didn't know the yet was with you. Like when you babbled before you could talk, or how you crawled even before you could walk. Yet's a dreamer, a schemer, a hoper, a trier, a maker, a doer, a gotta fly higher. This yet finds a way even when you don't, and yet knows you will when you think you won't. I already love the imagery in here. There's, you know, science and art and there's gardening tools and there's musical tool, musical things, musical instruments. It's super cool um, with the visual that are showing up in here. Like that shiny new bike that you couldn't ride. Hop right back on with the yet by your side. Yet doesn't mind warm-ups, fixes and flops, do-overs, redos, stumbles and stops. Yet knows there's mistakes, some big and some small. With yet, you're sure to get over them all. Play the kazoo or play the bassoon. Jam with the yet and you'll start and you'll soon be in tune. So it's, I won't read the whole rest of it, but it's, um, it's this really cool book. Oh, and I love, um, they show mistakes, they show problems along the way where you don't, you know, you don't get to that final thing right away. Maybe there are things that happens long, happen along the way. You're not there yet. You're still growing and creating and learning. Um, and this, I think this is a great example because it shows this fantastic visual to students of like, you, you, you might have a plan of where you want to end, but it takes a process. It takes painting the whole thing, which is time. Maybe you make a mistake and then you have to go back and start over. That happens, right? So it's just this really cool book that I think is also really cool because um, it shows a lot of art. It shows like kids making art. It shows kids making music. Um, it shows kids dancing. Um, the the visuals are really beautiful because it's kids with all different skin tones and all, and different ages of people and all different kinds of animals and beautiful colors. So it's like just a gorgeous book. Um, but it it's also shows like that there's a process and you maybe won't get it right away and that's okay. Um, towards the end it says, um, let's see. With the yet as your guide along the way, you'll do all the things you can't do today. Now you're bolder, braver, starting to see. With yet, you can get to where you want to be. So it's this um, this just really cool book about like there's a process. You're going to grow 
don't give up when you don't give it the first time. So super cool book. It's called The Magical Yet, um, and it's by author Angela D. Terlizzi and art by Loretta Alvarez. The art is just really, really gorgeous in this book. So um, where can you get books? There are a lot of great books you can get. Um, this, like Magical Yet, is is pretty recent. Um, the Yeah, it's a 2020, so you're probably not going to get it on those used book websites, um, which there are many of. Uh, websites like betterworldbooks.org or, or com, Better World, just search Better World Books or Thrift Books or um, ABE Books. All of those are used book websites. Um, you can also get them on Amazon. This one I'm borrowing from my local library. So um, I have a great library system and I saw the book on Amazon. I was like, I don't want to buy it without having looked at it. Um, and so I got it up from the local library and it's a super cool book. So definitely worth checking into. And the three books I shared tonight were uh, School of Rock, um, based, well, you probably if you search Mike White, you'll find that. Um, when Step Met Skip by Vicki Weber and The Magical Yet by, I have to keep moving because the, the library barcode is right over the author's name, by Angela uh, D. Terlizzi. And all those are linked on the links page on my blog if you're interested. Cool. Okay. I was hoping I'd get through those real quick so that I can then spend the rest of the time talking about my lessons. So um, again, if you watched um, these live videos, if you listen to the podcast last year, um, I was in a different schedule where I saw um, every homeroom. I saw them five days in a row for 50 minutes at a time. So I have to schedule my lessons a little differently this year because instead of that schedule, I'm seeing kids twice a week for a half an hour. So what I'm going to share with you tonight is for K1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I'm going to share all the things I'm doing in week three of my lessons. So you'll hear a first lesson and a second lesson for kinder, for first, for second, for third, for fourth, for fifth, and I'm going to try and get to fifth real quick so that I can do a more in-depth sort of version talking more about what I'm actually doing in that lesson. Okay, cool. So, um, kindergarten. So we've been doing, uh, when they come in, we do choo-choo train. Um, they stay in their line, and then I sort of lead them around the room in just like a big sort of a circle. In the last couple lessons, um, instead of following the circle, I take a different path. I do a squiggle path, or I do a zigzag. I follow lines in the room um, in, in any direction, and then we eventually end up, I circle us up by, you know, making that path, and then kids, we make a circle together. Um, we do our little circle song. Come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. It's just a simple little song, but I use that K1 and 2, so I just try and do it every class period for kinder so they hear it and get used to it, and eventually we'll start singing along. Obviously, I sing uh I pitch it differently if I'm singing with actual kids. This is just my <coughs> it's Monday night and I'm tired range. Okay, so we sing that. Um, I, I'm still doing attendance where I say like, where is David? And David goes, say, here I am. I say, there you are. Where is Vicky? Here I am. There you are. I don't actually have to do attendance. I'm doing this for K1 and 2 because eventually I'm going to do like a sung greeting like, hello, David. Hello, Mr. Rao. And so I'm going to eventually get to that. But in these first couple lessons, I just get them used to that idea of like, I say their name, they say, repeat back, or they, they answer back with a speaking voice because I want them to get the idea of the process, get comfortable with saying something on their own before I ask them to sing all on their own. Um, and so it's just a simple, where is so-and-so? Here I am. There you are. Um, and then I move on to the next kid. Uh, in this first lesson of the week, I do um, a poem that goes like, uh, I've shared about it the last couple weeks. I saw a little rabbit go hop, hop, hop. I saw his little ears go flop, flop, flop. I saw his little nose go wink, wink, wink. I saw his little eyes go blink, blink, blink. I said, Mr. Rabbit, won't you stay? He looked at me and hopped away. So we've done that one before. Um, but so in this lesson, I just do that again. It's like a, a chance for them to... Um, say something that they know. It's a finger play that they're really used to. So again, getting them used to using their fingers, getting them used to following a story, that's what we're doing in this lesson. Then I pull out Peter the rabbit, which they've talked to before. And Peter comes out and tells them about a very important and special thing, which is speaking voice. I tell them about the speaking voice. It is the best voice of all the voices. Why? Because you can use it anywhere. And he talks about why you can use your speaking voice, like where? The grocery store. Where else? 
Cafeteria. Where else can you use it? Mm, my classroom. Where else can you use it? At home. Yeah, you can use speaking voice anywhere. And then he teaches them a little poem that goes, Speaking voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. And he and so then we talk about your speaking voice and what it is. And we mention that maybe some other people are going to be coming on other days to talk about their favorite voice. But remember, speaking voice is the best. It's the best of all the voices. So if anyone says, oh, whisper voice is so good, you're going to go, speaking voice is the best. It's better than all the rest. Or if someone says like, oh, let me tell you about shouting voice, you're going to say, no, speaking voice is the best. And that's what you're going to do. And so like he prepares them like, oh, there are going to be other voices. You're going to meet other friends. I did a whole video and a blog post about the four voices, like using puppets to talk about the four voices. It's linked on the links page if you want to go watch that. You can't, but I'm not going to go into that. But today on this, this first lesson of the week, we just do the speaking voice. Talking with Peter takes five, seven minutes. And then um, for the end of the day, we do Where is Thumbkin? We started it on a previous day and we got to thumb, Thumbkin and Pointer. And then I try and do at least the last three together, uh, Tall Man, Ring Man, and Pinky. Because I feel like if, if you don't do like ri Tall Man with Ring Man... It gets a little kids flipping each other off because they just use that middle finger and they're used to like isolated thumb, isolated pinky. And so I always talk about uh, tall man and ring man um, get so lonely when they're by themselves. So they never stand by themselves. They oh, I say open up your hand and uh, they get to wave. Again, I did a whole video on finger plays, um, which included I saw a little rabbit, open shut them and. Where is Thumpkin? And you can you can watch that if you're interested. Um, it's in the video archive on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and you can watch my whole process for that. I won't go into that today, but it's there if you want it. Okay, so and then that's basically the end of class. So Choo Choo Train, where, where is so-and-so, Circle Song, Saw a Little Rabbit, Speaking Voice, um, Where is Thumpkin, and then like maybe one other thing in there. That's like six or seven things in a half an hour, which means all of those little pieces are short. And with kinders, they need that. They need a really, sh they need a lot of really rapid fire, short things to keep them interested, to keep them going. And all along the way, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging good behavior. I'm saying, oh my gosh, so and so sitting with the crisscross applesauce with their spoons in the bowl. I better give you a sticker. You know, it's this, these first couple of weeks are all just like reinforcing good behavior and trying to re restate what are the rules of the room and how do you move and how do you act and all that. And that's that. Those are showing up interspersed in the particulars of the lesson. The second lesson of the week, we do choo choo train, and in this time we're you know like maybe circles around the room, we're doing zigzags or whatever, taking that path through the room. And this time I on purpose, I, I sort of like circle back, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm almost gonna run into the back of the train. Oh, what would we do? Oh no! And then we don't, right? And then the second time around, I on purpose try and run our train into the train. The kids think that that is hilarious. It would on, it only works because we've done choo choo train like six times right? And every time they just follow me wherever I go. And once we start doing more paths, like they, they know to follow and stay behind, whatever. So this works because now we've done it so many times, they know the process. And now they see like, oh, you're going to run into the back end of the train. And we do. And what do they do? I don't tell them what to do. I just keep going. And they like giggle and they run and they try and catch up. And sometimes they do a great job of recovering and sometimes they don't. And we take that as a moment of like, well, you just have to keep going. See what you're going to do. See how you can get back in the train, get back in the line. And, and they do great. And it's, they think it's so funny and so silly and they love it. Um, we do where is so-and-so again, right? We do our, uh, I call out the attendance thing where I'm like calling to each kid. Um, and then we do a song from, ooh, uh, Lynn Kleiner's book, um, this book called SOS, Songs of the Sea. Lynn Kleiner um, is uh, the main author behind Music Rhapsody. Uh, if you never heard of Music Rhapsody, it's really great. There's so many fun books with great content. Um, but this one comes from a book called Songs of the Sea. She also has one for like... Um, called jungle beat there's one called like uh in all kinds of weather there's one like going to the mountains or my trip to the mountains she just came out with a new one called uh winter i can't remember it's but it's all like winter and like holiday songs throughout the year super great so from this book um we do the song sandy sand and uh, I talk about going to the beach and what it's like. And, but at the end of the day, I try to get back in the car and my mom says, you can't get in because you got sand on your shoulder. Oh no, I got sand on my ear. Oh no, I got sand on my head. Oh no, I got sand on my elbows. Oh no. 
And then um, my mom starts to go, you got sand on your shoulder? Oh no. I keep finding sand. You got sand on your ear? Oh no. And then I tell them I have a magical kind of sand, sand trapped inside of an egg, which of course I didn't bring an egg shaker home. Whoops. But it's in an egg shaker and I say, I shake it. I'm like, can you hear that sound? That's, it's sand in there. It's, it's trapped. It's magic trap. So now, now if my mom says, you got sand on your shoulder, I don't care because it's in the egg. I can just take it right off. I don't have to brush it off. It's not going to stick to me. So watch this. She says, you got sand on your shoulder? Oh yeah. I don't care. The sand comes right off because you move the egg. It's gone. You got sand on your tummy? Oh yeah. Don't care. It comes right off. And so in the song, in, the, in Lynn's book, it comes with a CD and you can get... Um, you can uh, download songs to your laptop or play it through CD player or whatever. Um, but the nice thing is that this song, Sandy Sand, so like the there is this like call and response where someone sings, you got sand on your shoulder? Oh yeah. And so anytime we do that, the kids put that egg shaker there. They move it. So I love doing songs like this in kindergarten because it helps reinforce body parts, especially for English language learners. It helps reinforce vocabulary, um, dexterity, moving your, the body. They're holding an egg shaker, which they love. And then so there's like that call and response. You got sand on your eyebrow. Oh yeah. And then there's a chorus of um, shake, 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 shake it off now. And they get to like shake and be silly. And then when they shake, the sound shakes in the egg shaker and they love that. And so it's just a super fun lesson for them to get to play the egg shakers. And it's um, easy and it's a fun little narrative. And there's also sung like a uh, call and response sing because um, they get to put the egg different place and sing. Oh yeah. So it's like does all these great things all at once. And that's a good lesson when you can hit like four or five different things at once. And this song is a great example of that. So if you want that, uh, you can find that in Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS Songs of the Sea. I linked on the links page, or you can look her up if you go to Music Rhapsody um, online and find it. Uh, so then we go to our, our dot spots, our singing spots, and I have the kids meet a new friend. And this friend, so last week they, they met, or last time they met Peter the Rabbit, he taught them about speaking voice. And now I have my friend Flitter, um, the butterfly. And Flitter, we have to be very quiet around Flitter because she gets real nervous. Yes, I do. I get so nervous around people that I don't know. And if they're too loud, I have to fly away. And so then this is the next person in the progression of like who we meet. And so they meet a Flitter. She taught them about a speaking voice. She teaches them a brand new poem that she just wrote when she was asleep on the leaf of a oak tree. I don't know what she says. And And so they, the kids are like, well, that sounds like Peter's poem, but okay. And so they do that and they think it's super fun and funny and then Flitter flies off and then Peter comes out and is like, I told you to say speaking voice. Next time if you meet a new person, you got to tell them speaking voice is the best. And so anyway, so it's just a fun like continuation of what they learned about speaking voice, but now it's whisper voice. Guess what? In the next one, they get to learn singing voice. Good times. Okay, and that basically is all the time we have in the lesson um, because we have intersecting trains and then egg shakers and all sorts of stuff. First grade, we come in, we do our circle song. In the previous lesson, we did head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So in this is just like a, we're pros at it, let's just sing through it. Um, I sit down at the piano and play because I'm comfortable doing that, but it's also nice because then they're singing on their own, they're doing the actions on their own, more independent, and I get to play and um, and they get that, you know, new accompaniment sound too. Whereas a lot of time in first and kinder, we sing acapella or with ukulele or whatever. So this is fun to be different. Um, and then I do, I do the back and forth. Where is Jeremiah? Here I am. There you are. Again, it's going to transition to sung, um, a, a sung attendance pretty soon, but for right now it's spoken. And then I pull up a PowerPoint presentation I made years and years ago, and I'm pretty sure it's on the links page, where uh, it's the peanut butter and jelly song. Peanut, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter and jelly. Not the peanut butter jelly. Not that one. That's not the one. <laughs> But it's um, the, uh, a song that they get to do, and I love this song because it uses sing voice, peanut, peanut butter, and whisper voice, and jelly, peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. And then we can use our speaking voice as we talk about where all the things come from, because uh, in the PowerPoint, it's like the little girl says, oh no, I'm out of peanut butter, can we make some peanut butter? Sure, but where do you get peanuts? Okay, well then they have to talk through, like, they first they get a guess, where do you think peanuts grow, on a tree, on a bush? underground on a vine they get a guess and then we confirm that and in this powerpoint they're like pictures of uh, peanuts on an actual peanut 
plant and how, what are you going to do with them? You have to reason through like how are we going to get them to be spreadable enough to be peanut butter? We have to smash them. How are we going to use? So it's it's a, it's a lot of critical thinking and a lot of like asking them, getting some ideas before we add in the actual words to that that's part of that verse, right? So eventually it's going to end up with first you take the peanuts and you dig them. You dig them, you dig them, dig them, dig them. Then you take the peanuts and you smash them. You smash them. And I'm not going to clap because this would be really loud to the microphone, but you smash them. And then you spread them. And then you get to sing the chorus again. And then you have to make jelly. You sing the chorus again. You got to do make a sandwich and eat it. And so it's it's a really cute, silly song. But the PowerPoint's there to like give all these visuals of like what can you make jelly out of? Here are some options. Okay, if we're going to do that, we're not going to smash because jelly ju or berry juice would get everywhere we'd have to use a different verb what could we use well we're going to squish them okay cool and so like the, the powerpoint sort of takes them through and gives them a visual and like helps direct that conversation um anyway if you're interested in that powerpoint i linked it on the links page so you can get it for yourself if you want by the time we by the time we do all that and put it all together um that's our full time okay then in the second lesson of the week we do our circle song um we do heads and shoulders one last time, um, we do Where Is So-and-So. We sing it this time. So that's a fun revelation. Where is David? And I just let them, whatever they do, here I am, here I am, here I am, here I am. I don't care, as long as you're using their singing voice. And if they don't use their singing voice, I say, oh, wow, great job. And I move on. I'm like, oh, good. Ooh, wow, singing voice, just like me. How cool. I don't ever say, like, oh, please try again. Use your singing voice. Not today. Um, we do that and then we learn hop old squirrel and my friend Skippy the squirrel comes out Skippy the squirrel obviously I have a puppet hello everyone and Skippy tells the kids about what he's doing and why a squirrel would maybe be out at this time of year uh, and what it's doing right hello yeah and tells them about like finding food and um, why it's hopping because it's like it looks like Skippy is hopping around the yard or skipping around the yard yeah and then we learn a song called hop old squirrel idle dum idle dum hop old squirrel idle dum dee hop old squirrel idle dum idle dum hop old squirrel idle dum dee but again I like like having the puppet here putting it in context the squirrel's hopping around the yard looking for food why is it looking for food because the tree stopped making its food in the winter and needs to store it up now and so it's like a connection to life science but it's also like giving context to the song what is it it's not just a silly song about a squirrel i mean it is but why is the squirrel hopping around etc etc so so skippy gets to sort of lead that conversation take us around and then we do hop old squirrel one time and then skippy says why don't we change that to jump old squirrel yeah and then we jump old squirrel idle dum idle dum jump old squirrel idle dum d and then we do what well my name is skippy so we skip yeah so let me skip around the room and and so then this is also like becomes a lesson where i get to talk to kids about how do you move in the room how do you move in a way that you don't run into anyone that you don't run into anything how can we do, you know we talk about personal bubbles and personal spaces and so it like it teaches a song talks a little bit about life science uses a puppet woo and we talk about different movement words and also we talk about safe ways to move in the classroom again if you can get a lesson that does like four or five or six or seven things great those are the best kind of lessons Second grade, kids come in, we do um, our, a quick circle with our circle song. Again, same one I've used kindergarten through second. Um, we do Little Sally Walker, which they learned in a previous lesson, only we, um, we add the game where they get a spin and choose a new kid at the end of every uh, verse. Um, and it's a super fun song. If you don't know it, I talked about it, I think, in the previous week, and you can always go back and um, look at that. I do the song Seven Jumps, um, which is a... I mean, you can find it, a, there are like a couple different versions of it, and I think the version I use, I don't know if it's a Phyllis Weikert or a Shenanigans version, which the one I, I, I use, because there are a couple different ones out there, but um, in, in the previous lesson, we did everything from like one space, like just our, our spot, our dot spot. We didn't move throughout the room. This time we do seven jumps and we actually move throughout the room. If you're familiar with the song, um, there's an A section, a B section, a C section. The A section is where, where on the first week we just stayed in place and walked in place. And this time we actually walk through the room. 
the B section goes dun 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 da 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 da. You spin around dun 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 da 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 da. And the C part is a cumulative section where kids have to like uh, put their foot on the ground, put their one foot and then a second foot on the ground, one foot, second foot, a knee, up to seven items. And so in the in that previous week's lesson, we just stayed in our personal space. But this one, we we level up a little bit where they have to walk through the space to a new place in the room. Um, and then that, like that's the end of the time because we. Um, Little Sally Walker takes a little while. Um, we do our, our song and then seven jumps. We talk about how it's different, how we're gonna do things not exactly the same and then um, we're out of time by then. On the second day, we learn a song called uh, Dippy Doo. It's a hello song. And we talk about how you can say hello, good day in a lot of different languages. How you might say good day as like a greeting in the United States or in England or a place that speaks English. But if you go, if you come from somewhere else, like if you come from Mexico or Ecuador or Spain where they speak Spanish, you could say buenos dias, which means good day. Or if you went lived in a place like France or parts of Canada where they speak French, you might say bonjour. Um, or if you lived in Germany or Germany, there aren't many other places that speak German or, or uh, Austria, you might say guten tag, uh, as good day. And there are a lot, there are lots of ways you can say good day, right? And so um, then this song is a good day song. And um, there's a link to the sheet music on the links page, but basically the song goes, good day, good day to you. Good day, oh dippy do. Good day, good day to you. Good day, oh dippy do. And then the B section goes dip, dip, dippy doo, dippy doo, oh dippy doo, dip, 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 dippy doo, dippy doo, oh dippy doo. There are a lot of different ways to do this song. At, at first, we do uh, everyone singing "Good day, good day to you." Eventually, down the road in previous in further lessons, it's going to be one person sings "Good day," and they, and then they point, and then another person goes "Good day to you," and then another person they're pointed to, that kid gets to sing a lot solo. Good day, point to someone else, and that kid gets to go, oh, dippy doo. So it'll be four little soloists in there. Good day, good day to you. Good day, oh, dippy doo. And then you do that again. Or you could even break it up so it's, um, good day, good day to you, new soloist. Good day, oh, dippy doo, new soloist. You could do however you want. But then the dippy doo, the first day we learned it is dip, pat, so clap, pat, clap, pat, clap, pat, oh, dippy, do, clap, 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 pat, clap, pat, oh, clap, pat. And then by the end of the lesson, I say, instead of clap, pat, why don't we do dip, dip, dippy, do, so clap, and then pat the hands of the person on both sides of you, dip, dip. Dippy do so it's like a, a, a partner clapping thing, which is a super fun version of it. Rob Amchin on his YouTube channel, um, if you search for Dippy do D I P I D U and Rob Amchin A M C H I N into YouTube, you can find his class that he's teaching, like Introduction to Music Ed. Um, at the college he teaches at, you can see them doing it. It's a super cool thing. But my second graders took to it just like that. It was super fun. And it's also fun because our school theme from the year is Olympics, so like connect to cultures around the world. And then we pull out some popsicle sticks and we start to do a little bit of dictation, um, walking and running. And uh, single sound, two sounds, just very, very simple um, notation. It's sort of a continuation of what we did in previous years. My third graders come in, we've already learned the Grumpy March, so we just run through the Grumpy March, which they, at this point, are like pros. Um, so on this time, we, we run through it, they love it, they, they do great with it. Um, we circle up, um, and we um, do a new song called Johnny Get Your Hair Cut, which is, I've talked about, I know, on previous years, you can find it if you do a search online, um, but it's a, just a silly little song. Johnny, get your hair cut, hair cut, hair cut. Johnny, get your hair cut, just like me. Johnny, get your hair cut, hair cut, hair cut. Johnny, get your hair cut, just like me. In this first lesson, we just learned the song, and we do, uh, we pantomime different actions. So it might be cutting hair, it might be curling hair, it might be uh, styling hair, mohawk hair, dyeing hair, whatever we want to do. <clears throat> and um, we just try different hair things, um, and then I, I'm trying my best to like, again, connect to real life 
music making world cultures, especially pop music, rock music, things that kids are super interested in. We talk a little bit about, have you ever seen like rock stars with hair with different colors? We A lot of times we get talking about Billie Eilish. Sometimes we talk about not the Osbournes anymore, but the Osbournes maybe you used to talk about them. Um, they're just not, my third graders don't know them. We eventually end up talking about BTS. Um, I, if we have time, I show them um, pictures of, of BTS with different hair colors. We talk about how like maybe um, in Korea, cultural expectations are different or things different around the world, or maybe they're just doing it because they're rock stars. And then we watch, um, if we have time, we watch the America's Got Talent performance of Dynamite, which BTS did last year. Two years ago? Last year. Maybe it was two years ago. <laughs> I can't remember. But it's a super fun video. Kids like it. They know the song, but it's fun to see them perform it. And that ver that version of Dynamite, I think, is my favorite because um, it's it looks like it's all one shot. Um, and there are, like, fireworks and, like, puffs of smoke. And it's super fun and dynamic. The second time we come back for the second lesson of the week, we do um, a version of uh, Los Machetes that I learned from a Sana Longden workshop. So I'm not going to share the particulars of that because it's not my lesson to share, but I know that you can find that in one of Sana's books. So Sana Longden, S-A-N-N-A-L-O-N-G-D-E-N. -N -N -E you can find her books online. She worked with uh, Phyllis Weikert, um, and you can find um, those books online. But I know that the lesson for Los, Los Machetes is in there totally worth it. What I will say is um, we don't use machetes. We don't use rhythm sticks because there's a, there's like a clicking, uh, moving part of this song. And so instead we use these fun plastic hollow rhythm sticks. These are my favorite rhythm sticks ever because they come in four colors. The colors of my instrument families, the teams that I talked about last week. So um, the percussion kids get green, the strings kids get blue, the woodwind kids get yellow, the, red, the brass kids get red. And then um, they also, they're hollow, they make a fun sound, but they're not too loud. They're easy for kids to use, easy for kids to hold. If they hit your head accidentally, it doesn't hurt. They don't splinter, they don't lose their color. These are like my favorite rhythm sticks ever, and they're not expensive. I found them first in a PE catalog, but I, know, I found them online. I linked them to them on my links page on Amazon. Um, but if you can't find them, send me a message. I'll send you a link. But you can find them in PE catalogs too. Super fun. Great great to have. Um, fourth grade. They come in for the first lesson of the week. We do Chester. Um, I've talked about that in a previous year, previous week, so I'm not going to run into that. But this time we do an elimination. If you make if you make a mistake either with the words or the actions, you sit down. Just to show me you made a mistake. You're not in trouble. There's no problem. We've only been singing this song three, to, you know, three class periods. But just to show me that you know if you made that mistake, just sit down. And then we do like an elimination style, and the last kid gets to go like um, pop a bubble wrap bubble, and we clap for them. Right, and so that we just go through a process of doing that, and um, they got to write their name on the board or whatever, and we sing through three or four times. We have uh, multiple winners. If you've won once, you can't win again that day, maybe another day. Um, <clears throat> and then my fourth graders had just started the Grumpy March. We finished the Grumpy March um, that day. They get real good at that. Again, I'm using this with two grades. I normally don't do two grades, but I didn't do this one last year with them. And it's fun and easy. And for kids who haven't danced in a while for fourth grade, they just, they get right to it. So it's a super fun one for them to do. The second time they come back, um, we, we do the Grumpy March, just run through it once. Um, and actually, again, what <laughs> I'm trying to connect them to more, um, pop culture, real time, things that are happening right now. So we do the song like two rotations through with the music that is indicated in New England Dancing Masters. It's called like Wizard Walk on their CD. Then I say, oh my gosh, you're so good at this. Let's try a new song. So what I have done is I queued up on my iPad a version of um, the BTS song, Butter. Again, BTS. I love BTS, <laughs> just admit. But um, they have um, their, their like most popular song right now is called Butter. It's You've probably heard it. Um, but what they do when they release songs is that BTS releases like the original version. And if you go on Spotify, then they have like their like hot version or their spicy version or their sweet version, which is like like a remix version of their own song. But they always include, well, usually they have been including an instrumental version. That's just the backing track. So I don't tell kids what it is. I just turn on the backing track. We do the Grumpy March with Butter playing in the background. Um, it's super fun. It works perfect. I think we get like five rotations out of the song, maybe six. I'll count if we do it again. Um, and then I say, do you know what that song is? And some kids are like, I think I know. And I play it again. And then I play the first bars and some kids are like, oh my gosh, I know. And then I play the first four or five bars with 
them singing. And the kids are like, oh my gosh, another song. So uh, we do that, we do that. And then um, if we have time, I show them a version of the music video. Um, usually I show the official music video, um, the, the Billboard Music Award, music award and like they're, they're like li live versions that they do for award shows and stuff are slightly more risque. So I don't show those, but I do show the official music video version and it goes over great. But it's fun to do that original folk song that they've done, the Grumpy March, with a new song because it's, it's challenging, um, it's fun, they like it because it's like connecting with pop music, so they like, they, like, they like how it sounds, they like how it works, so super fun. And then, again, I have another lesson that I can't really share because it's not my lesson, but I do Farmer's Dairy Key. The version that I do is the version sort of outlined in um, Jeff Kriske and Randy DeLellis' book, um, as American as Apple Pie. Jeff and Randy made the game plan curriculum, so um, this is just a really well thought out lesson. It has fun extensions. There's a rock, paper, scissors game um, that goes into this. We're singing, we're moving. You might have learned this song if you took Kodai levels or ORF levels or something, um, but it's just a great song to do and it's fun and um, again, that book is called As American as Apple Pie. I didn't bring it home, of course. I forgot because it's Labor Day weekend. I didn't think to grab it on a Friday, but um, it's a super great book. Um, totally worth buying now, later. You can't find it on Amazon. You got to go to West Music or straight to their website. Um, great book and great lesson. Super well thought out. If you like game plan, you'll love this. Okay, fifth grade. I'm going to spend a slightly more time dissecting this to talk a little bit about the process. So fifth grade, they come in. Um, we've been doing other things for the past two weeks. And I wanted to start with something new and fresh. And so um, I say there's a song that actually it's going to test to see how well you listen to instructions. And, um, and it's called the Beanbag Boogie. And here there are two main parts. The first part, you get to take the beanbag and you get to balance it. So if the song goes, put that beanbag on your shoulder, you got to put the beanbag on your shoulder. But you can't just stand there like a mannequin. You got to move. You got to do something some sort of dance move maybe you just like bounce maybe move your feet maybe you just hop i don't care whatever you do you got to do that but you still have to balance the beanbag on your shoulder so it's a little tricky because you have to balance and move right so like that's a little tricky the other thing is that then it doesn't stay on your shoulder so then it might say like put that bean bag on your head put that bean bag on your ankle wherever it tells you to put the bean bag you got to put the bean bag there balance it and also move. You can't just stand. So it gives them a little bit of a challenge, right? That's one part of the song. The other part of the song goes, um, now hold that beanbag in your hand and boogie while you can. This is from a super old CD called Kids in Motion by Greg and Steve. Um, when I was student teaching a long time ago, uh, my cooperating teacher was like, I got that song. Or, I got that I got that, the Greg and Steve Kids in Motion on record if you want to listen to it on vinyl. I'm like, cool. So it's, it's real old, but you can get it. It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon. It's probably in the closet at, the, at your school. Um, but Beanbag Boogie, there are two of them. There's Beanbag Boogie 1, Beanbag Boogie 2. Same song, just with different place to balance the beanbag uh, on those verses. And then when on the chorus, they got to take the beanbag and toss it. So we talk about how if the... If you toss your beanbag in the air and you lose control, if you lose control of the beanbag, you lose the beanbag. So if the beanbag hits a ceiling, if it hits a light, if it hits, if it flies over and hits a person, if it flies out of control and hits a drum, if it, if you lose control of the beanbag, you lose the beanbag. And so um, it's it's fun again to talk about like what's acceptable, what's okay, where is the line, what are the you know, uh, if you lose control of the beanbag, it's a super bummer. You don't get it back. You have to come turn it in. But you can still dance and stuff. But you just can't use the beanbag and the song's called the beanbag boogie so you sort of don't want to lose it but uh, anyway so so it's like just a fun song and again it's it does two things it's the the balancing and the moving um and the listening and then also um tossing in an appropriate way right i've in my classes this last week i've only had like a couple kids like maybe one lose lose the beanbag it's because I don't know, I lost control. This is the kid I would have expected. But um, but then they just, they come in and hand their beanbag and then they're done. But the, the other thing I like to do with this song is that it has a clear A, B um, form. So there's the part where you toss, the part where you bounce, the part where you toss, the part where you bounce. So if we do this song again in the future, um, Beanbag Boogie 2, with different uh, balancing on different body parts or whatever, um, it 
then we can talk about, ooh, there are two parts of the song. What part is this? It's the verse. Oh, what part is this? It's the chorus. So super easy to help them recognize that. Um, also, there are a couple places where they have to be balanced that are tricky. So like on your back, on your finger, on your knee, and still dance. It's a little tricky. They do that, and then we get to, um, we, we started Omochio Tsukimasho, the last class, um, or the last week. And so in this lesson, we take it and we like become professionals with it. What I love with kids when we're doing that, and if you're like, what's that? If you watch last week's video, I talk about it um, more in depth. Um, so I won't go too much into the lesson. But what I do in this lesson to sort of encourage them is when we finish beanbag boogie, put our beanbags away, and again, it's again, it's trying like reinforcing classroom management. When we put away bean bags, it's not a rush to put them all away. It's oh, if you're holding a blue bean bag, go put away. If you're holding a red bean bag, go put away. Holding a yellow bean bag, go put away. And and I sort of do that so they have to listen when to go. I throw in colors that we don't actually have bean bags for. If you have a black bean bag, go put away. So they're still listening, but like nobody's actually moving. So if you have like a bottleneck at the bean bag container, you could say. Um, if you have a brown bean bag, go put away. We don't have brown bean bags. So nobody's, nobody's going to be added, but I'm still giving them a command to listen for. So, um, anyway, we move on, we do omochio. And, um, when we make that transition, we put our bean bags away. I say, who has had mochi since the last time I saw you? Or if you haven't had mochi, who has like gone shopping and looked for it? Okay. And so a lot of kids at this point, now that I know that they can get it at their local Target, Walmart, Hy-Vee, whatever, Kroger, um, they go looking for it and then they come back and report back. And then ev with every lesson, there's like another kid who's like, oh, I tried it and I had mango and it was good. Or I had the peanut one and it was gross or whatever. And so then I also show them like, I go to the local grocery store, I find it. Um, there, Our local grocery store has the ice cream version and also like the traditional version that's like just on a, on a shelf. Um, and I say like, look for the aisle that says like international foods or our local one has like banners that say Asian market and it has like a, a whole big row that with like Korean food and um, Chinese food and Japanese food and Thai food, like specific ingredients to make those foods. So I say like, I show them what I found and then they go looking for it. Anyway, so then we put together with pairs and we try it. Again, they get to choose their partner. We go to go back and forth because there are the two parts in the song. There's the mashing part and then there's the action part and kids love it. It goes really well. And in this lesson, it's just like a, we practice it, we've done it, we get good at it. Maybe we watch a video of another class doing it. I like to take videos of my classes doing it so then like other classes can be like, ooh, look at that, ooh, that's good. And we can evaluate them, we can talk about how great they're doing, we can spot things that we really like. All just fun things to do with the song. Again, if you wanna extend the lesson a little bit, you wanna throw in that evaluation piece, you can even show them videos of themselves doing it before and ask if they've gotten better or not, or, you know, it's just a lot you can do with that. The second time, they come in and it's like a super quick, like five, 10 minute. Um, we do Omochio, but I put them in their family teams. And in my room, if you've seen pictures on Instagram or my Facebook, I have um, lines on the floor, four lines, red, yellow, green, blue. Each one matches like the team, the family they're a part of. So they get to stand along that line. And then I just say, okay, blue and red, or I can't remember who blue and green face one another, red and yellow face one another. And before when we did Omochio, I let them choose their partner. And this time I don't, it's whoever they're standing across from. And then with that kid, I'll be like, okay, red line. Okay. Green line. You're the mashers. Okay. Everyone else, you're the mixers. And now that we're there with a new partner, someone they don't get to choose, they don't get to like, oh, I know this person, I work really well. Before we actually do it, I say, okay, mashers who are just going to keep the steady beat, do one time with your hands frozen. And uh, mixers, you can do the actions in between their hands. They're not going to smash your hands this time. They give you that one freebie round. And then we do it. We try it. We switch jobs. Again, the, the new kid gets a freebie round. We do it. And then I have the groups rotate. I say like one kid at the end of row, red row, kid at the end of green row, move to the other side and everybody moves down one. So it's like, it's, it's an extra challenge because they're not what the person they're used to. Um, I go like a tiny bit faster. Um, and then I don't leave breaks in between the two times. So it's just, it's like an elevated version of what they're already used to, which they think is fun because it feels like a challenge. <clears throat> we rotate two or three partners. So they get to try it with someone new. Um, and they, they get really good at it and they really like it. So it's like a fun next step with the lesson. Um, we get place. And then um, I have them go get whiteboards, erasers, and markers. And I've learned over the years, 
anal with <laughs> the procedures for getting whiteboards and erasers and markers and I can be super stressed out about all my expo markers dying or I can just have fun with it. And I, I have fun with it now. And so I say, okay, when you get a whiteboard, they're all the same. So don't be picky pickers because they're all exactly the same. So grab a whiteboard and then, I go, oh my gosh, I have these brand new, beautiful, amazing, never been touched erasers. Ooh, look, aren't they in such good shape? Ooh, wow, ooh, these are so good. Ooh, they're so nice. Wow, look at that. Isn't that just the clean, fresh and clean? They're not, they're in terrible shape. I try and pick the grossest ones to show the kids the first time. I do it because they think it's silly. They're like, Mr. Rao, okay, those have been used. These are just facial cleansing pads from Dollar Tree. You can get them like four for a dollar. Um, I bought them years and years and years ago, and when they get real grody and gross, I take them home and wash them. But they're cloth. You can use them forever. I like them better than actual, like those little brick, like you can buy from like Lakeshore Learning. You can buy the little brick eraser things. I don't like those because you sm the kids smack them on their whiteboards and clack them around. Anyway, these are much quieter, and um, they erase just fine, and you can wash them. So uh, they're lovely. And then I hand out a marker to each kid. I don't let them choose their favorite color. I just hand them one as they walk by. And then what do we do with our markers this day? Um, we get our markers and I pull up, usually I try and airplay um, my um, my iPad to the whiteboard so they can like see in real time as I'm drawing on my iPad. That makes management really easy because I can sit in the back of the room and watch everybody doing their thing and my stuff is still projected on the board. If you don't have that, just walk up to your whiteboard. Right? Or use a document camera or something so you can project up what you're doing on the board. What we do the first time is I take the board and I have them write out all the notes we know. So first we do a quarter note, which is an oval, a stem, color in. Easy. Let's do an um, eighth note pair. So oval, stem, color in, oval, stem, color in, and a beam on the top. Easy. Okay, let's make each. So we go through, we do eighth notes, um, eighth notes quarter notes, quarter rests, 16th note set, four 16ths in a row. We do, um, we do half note, whole note, half rest, whole rest. We walk through all of that, right? And, and so then if, if I know we're gonna have time, I'll do um, a flag eighth note as well. Like nice versions, like I let them take their time and actually like go through to really do it. And then I say, you know, um, here, just hold on a second and watch this. If I'm making a 16th note, just like see how long it takes. Okay, so I've got my oval, a stem, color in, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, and then I do my beam on the top and I have to do a second beam because it's a 16 note set, right? Gosh, that took forever. And that's just one. What if I wanted to make like 12 sets of these? take forever and actually composers like famous composers if you look at like Beethoven or Bach or Mozart or Scott Joplin or um, John um, Williams like whoever right all these people Amy Beach all these people if you're if you look and they're going really fast it gets messy so like they you know like eventually you'll it looks like a mess on the page because they just don't have time to write everything and so I have a quick simple easy way to do it instead for the 16th note what if I just did this You still know what it is, right? A 16th note set, yes. What if I did this? What would that be? Ta D. Yes, what if I just did this? Ta. Okay, great. So like we just go through writing out stick notation because in the next lesson, I want I want them to know how to do like the nice standard notation version. Um, I also want them to just be able to do it quickly and not like the, the note head is what takes the longest and they stress out about the most because like I gotta color it all in. And so when we take that part out of the equation, when we just reduce it to stick notation, then we can do like um, rhythm race where like, okay, I'm gonna say something, you gotta write it down. Ta, ta, di, ta, ka, di, mi, ta. And they can go real fast and you're not waiting for like those three kids like finished out their most beautiful you know, the, the ovals, whatever. So it just, it's like, it introduces them to the process of writing a little faster. So in the next coming lessons, we'll do rhythm race, rhythm, rhythm race, race, race stuff. We're like, we're racing and we're like, I'll say a rhythm, I'll clap a rhythm, I will play a rhythm on a, a xylophone and they have to notate it. So, but this is just the introductory, like here's the nice way to do it, the standard notation. If you're in a hurry, Here's the stick notation, and this is like a process of getting used to that. 
remembering what it's like to do whiteboards, what is the process for doing that in the music room, how do you get them out and put them away. It's all the procedural stuff and all the like logistical stuff before they're actually doing the task of what I really want them to do because I want them to get the procedure and tasks and all of that so they're confident with that so that when we are doing the things that are like more cognitively difficult, it's not as tricky because they already know the process. And that's the end of our lesson by the time we're done. And oh, one thing I always say is I, put, I say put the cap on until you hear it click. Because if you don't, you're going to dry out the markers and they're all going to die, which is sad. So um, uh, my art teacher actually, she even says like press it till it clicks. She has like a, a poster in her room. So kids are used to that terminology at my school. So that's what we do. Okay, that's all my K-5 lessons. I'm out of time. Um, I hope you'll join me next week for another Musical Mondays, and I hope you'll join me in the next coming weeks, uh, either in Chicago on the 18th, uh, St. Louis on the 25th, or Milwaukee on October 2nd for in-person workshops. Um, I hope you'll come and join us. It's going to be a great time. Thanks so much for coming along on this Labor Day, week, Labor Day night to join us, and I hope I'll see you next week for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Instagram.